Hi, it's Kirsten with The Wooden Butterfly, where we're all about the transformation. And today we're transforming this china cabinet that I found on Marketplace into not one, but two different pieces that really just fit better into my home. And I'm only concentrating today on the bottom half, and you'll see why in just a few seconds. So let me explain to you a little bit of the backstory. So at the beginning of December, Furniture Flipping Teacher and Up Paint Company decided to put out a challenge. And if you submitted a piece of furniture in three different categories, you could win um, several different prizes. And I saw it as an opportunity since I was transitioning away from the retail space that this would be a great challenge to enter. And there were three different categories, on budget, um, painter's choice, and dresser. So I started looking at some of the pieces that I have, as well as I started looking at a few, couple of different thrift stores and on Marketplace. And lo and behold, I found this china cabinet on Marketplace. And you're thinking, well, you didn't enter a china cabinet. <laughs> no, I didn't. What I found was this china cabinet that I wanted to separate and use the bottom half as a credenza because for months and months and months I have been looking for a piece of furniture, a credenza, a sideboard, something of that nature that would house my grandkids toys. So they're here three days a week and they have a decent amount of toys that need to be corralled and I needed something that we could close them off into. I found pieces that were open or they were, um, they had many more drawers, doors, sorry. Um, and I had a certain space that it needed to go into as well as I needed legs because it is going to go over one of the floor vents and I needed the air to flow out from underneath it. So after looking and looking and looking, I just couldn't find anything new. Um, anything new really was way out of my price point. Um, as well as the quality just isn't there usually. Um, the second thing was, is it had to be a certain size and I couldn't find it all. I couldn't find anything, um, used either that, that would work. They were all really big. So, um, when I found this China cabinet, I saw the bottom half and I said, oh my gosh, that's going to be perfect. So I messaged the woman and asked that was selling it and I asked her does the top come off do you see where the top separates and she said no she's like it's all one piece I don't see anywhere that they separate and I said can you just check to make sure are there brackets on the back or anything and she said no I don't see any brackets it, it's all one piece and so I was like gosh out of all the china cabinets that I have worked on and, and seen they usually separate so I'm, I'm trying to figure out like maybe they did glue the top. This was the 70s, late 60s, 70s era type of furniture. So they did some wonky things at that time. So I thought, well, maybe they did just glue the two pieces together. So I went out to um, look at it. It wasn't too far from my home. And so I went out to look at it and lo and behold, there were four screws at the bottom part of the, the top that just fastened to the top of this bottom. And um, I thought, oh my gosh, awesome. We unscrewed those four screws, the top came off, and lo and behold, now I have two pieces to transform. And so come back next month to see that one. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you know when it comes out because I, um, I have some awesome ideas for what I'm going to do with that as well. So this is what it looked like once I popped that top off the of it. This is where we're left with that 70s beauty. I'm using up paint in the colors Deep Anchor, Green Escape, Grage, and Coconut Cover. I also use their blend their brush to blend with as well. As you can see, those four holes right there are where the screws were holding the top piece on. So let's get started. First, I took off all the doors. <clears throat> I was wondering if this molding would come off fairly easy. And 
I want to encourage you to, when you look at a piece like this, please don't discard it because there are some gems that you will find inside. I was thinking that I was going to have to go to the hardware store and buy some plywood to build new doors because I wanted a, a sleeker look, something without so much detail. And kind of this bubble molding just wasn't going to have it. Lo and behold, there were screws that held the front on. So now all I had to do was remove the screws and the top popped right off and I have a nice flat surface to work with. Now we can go ahead and clean the piece inside and out. You want to scrub it down really good first and then rinse it really well. I'm using a TSP based cleaner to remove any dirt, grime, cobwebs, and whatever else that there was left in the piece. I'm using all purpose, I'm using Bondo all purpose putty to fill in any of those holes that um, were left from the screws. The reason why I love using this product is, well, the fumes are not so great, so wear a mask, but I love how it hardens very fast and it also sands really smooth. And you usually don't have to apply more than two coats. I, two coats usually because there'll be little cracks and crevices, which you'll see in just a second. But just add that hardener to it and make sure you mix it really, really well. Now you also have to work really fast because it does dry within just a few minutes. I'm using just a tongue depressor, something I can just go ahead and throw out and a scrap piece of wood to mix it up on. It's, it's really hard to get, once this hardens, it's hard to get off. So I like to just use something I can dispose of afterwards. And then using my DeWalt cordless sand, orbital sander to with 50, 150 grit sandpaper to remove the excess Bondo, as well as I'm giving the entire thing a scuff sand so that the wood has a little more tooth to it to adhere that prime bonding primer. Parts of this were real wood and parts of it were um, particle board with some sort of laminate. I don't think it's a wood laminate um, on the front. So we went ahead and filled all those holes in the front of those doors as well. And then I mixed up just a little bit more to fill in any of those other little cracks and crevices after we sanded it down. Now it's time for Zinzer Bullseye 123 Primer. This is a bonding primer that is phenomenal. It's water-based and goes on really nicely and evenly. I'm using a four inch foam roller to roll this on the entire piece. And then I go back over lightly just to smooth out any um, ridge marks or whatnot that may have been left by the roller. We want a nice smooth consistency because whatever is underneath is just going to be amplified on the top. And I am a stickler for a nice smooth surface. So you're just going to add this to the entire piece and the inside. You'll have to do a little bit of yoga and a little bit of a little bit of gymnastics to get in there. Now we're using a all-purpose tool to cut away parts of the um, the legs that were at the base. In order to add the legs that I wanted to add, we had to take parts of it off and then build it back up again with wood. So this is a two by six and then there's another one by four added on top of that so that we could actually add the braces for the legs and get them in the spots that we needed. You'll notice my husband helping for just a minute because I was short on time and I needed an extra set of hands real quick. Um, in the package, these legs I bought off of Amazon and of course th that and all of the tools that I used are in linked in the description. I am using the coconut cover, the metallic paint, 
and I wet the piece first so that it gave kind of a wash to the the leg so that the wood grain would still shine through and then once it's dry you just go ahead and screw those into place and then of course clean off the bottom so when you flip it over it isn't such a mess but then I mixed together the deep anchor in the green escape. I wanted eight ounces of paint, so I filled up to the four ounce line first and then the eight ounce line. And then you stir it really, really well. You wanna make sure you get the both colors mixed all the way through and it creates this beautiful teal color, which is a hint as to what's in my living room. I'm going to use that color to paint the inside so there's a pop of color on the inside. I would have painted the outside this color, but there's already a lot of it in the room, so I just wanted a little a little bit. While that dried, I went ahead and I measured an inch and a half from each side of each one of the doors so that I could add the molding. I sketched out a box with a pencil on the there and then measured each side so that I could measure the molding. I'm using these cobalt miter snips that again are linked in the description <laughs> and um, they work really well for cutting just this small molding. Sometimes if you take it out to a miter saw it'll just obliterate it because it's just too powerful where these snips cut it really nicely. See a nice clean crisp edge. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the front section that did not remove. There's no hinges on this section. Later on, we are going to take this part out and then add hinges. We just, um, you know, I ran out of time and I said, well, I'm just gonna call it and just leave it solid for right now. Why on earth they would leave that solid and not put hinges on it I really don't know but like I said they did some wonky things during this time period but we definitely will add hinges there later on so that all three doors open and it'll be a lot more accessible to the inside so I'm just doing the same process I drew the box and then measured the the molding and I'm adding it on with a uh, cordless nail gun that again linked in the description I use one and a quarter inch brad nails and it is a little bit tricky with the molding since it is curved and I had to shoot the nail through the the thickest section but it is it can be done and then I'm using the fast dry dap caulk to fill in all the holes. Normally I would have used a wood putty, but again, we were short on time and I was out of wood putty. So going to the store right now just wasn't in the books. Now we get to the fun part, the painting part. So I did a second coat on the inside and now I'm adding the grayish to the outside. I'm using really long brush strokes to do two sections. And then you'll see where I take, after the second section is done, I come back through and do really long brush strokes so that you don't see a bunch of short choppy ones. They'll be nice and, and long. And for the most part, most of the brush strokes leveled right out. This paint is, it covers really well. It's nice and creamy and it seems to bond really well and is quite durable. So overall, I'm very excited about the paint. It is a recycled paint, so you actually can turn in your unused gallons of paint and they will recycle it and turn it into either chalk paint, metallic, and they have latex paint as well. I'm using a chiseled angled brush from Zebra. This, um, I love it because it holds a lot of paint. It adds a lot of cover, but you can also get into all of those nooks and crannies really nicely. 
I'm adding a base coat to the entire piece, even though you'll see the surprise in just a minute, there will be some blending being done to the bottom. And the metallic paint is a little more transparent than the chalk paint. So it needs an a, it needs a base of something underneath it. So other than just the primer so that it it you don't need as many coats. I guess that's that's where I'm going with that. So I just again I'm using the same technique I always do. I have a slightly damp brush. I don't use a whole lot of paint on my brush, but just lay it on there. Now we'll blend the coconut cover that I put on the legs, remember? And you'll need three different brushes. I'm using the up paint brush, chalk paint brush to blend with, and then I'm using two zebra brushes to apply the paint. This first panel is done already. And now we're gonna go on and add the grayish to the top portion of the door. Well, that's the false door that is. Um, and I'm just pointing out there that I didn't, they're just set in there. The hinges are not applied at this particular moment because you can't, don't want to sit there and dance around hinges. It, when you're blending, you're going to be moving the paint around a lot and you just, they, they would just get in the way. So I, these are just set into place. They're not actually fastened. So again, I'm just applying that grayish to the top half of the door this would be this would basically be our second coat I always 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 recommend applying two coats of any paint that you use the cut first um, the first coat covered very well but I always recommend we are human we're gonna miss a spot and or we're gonna have it thinner or thicker in some areas, as well as it gives that little extra durability to your paint as well. Now we're going on to add the, the metallic, the coconut cover. It's a really pretty bronze color. Um, it has a slight gold tint to it, but it's, it's quite bronzy, and that's what I thought would be really pretty. Um, together with the with the teal it really it really pops and I have that teal color throughout my room so I'm just going ahead and I'm just laying the paint on there it does not matter which way your brush strokes go it does not matter how you get it on there you just want some color laid there because afterwards you're gonna see that um, we're gonna blend those colors together anyways. Now we're going to take a continuous mister bottle and you're gonna lightly mist where you're blending those colors together. I'm using that up paint chalk mineral chalk paint brush, sorry, um, to blend those two colors together. So I'm going horizontal first, and then I'll go vertical, and then I'll go diagonal. And you just keep blending and blending and blending until you get it where it feels right to you. I like to blend until it is a soft, gradual line, or almost invisible line between the two colors. So like I said, it's just horizontal, it's vertical, it's diagonal, and you're just gonna keep blending until those colors look right to you. You can then add a little more of the lighter color, or you could add a little bit of the darker color. It doesn't matter. I actually have a tutorial of the basics of how to blend with paint, so if you would like to get that, you can click the link in the description.
You also want to keep a paper towel or a rag handy so that you can take any paint that might have loaded up onto the brush and you want to you want a dry brush for one as well as you don't want that paint to build up on there because then you're just moving lots of paint around and it gets super muddy. So you really want to remove any of that excess paint that builds up on your blending brush. When I'm blending, I really like to use a brush that is really dense and has soft bristles. That way the the lines between the two colors blend really softly. There are several ways that different people blend. This is just my particular um my particular style, like I'm very tactile, so I like a very smooth surface, as I said before, and I like a very smooth, gradual gradient between the two colors. So here, let me remind you of what it was before, and there it is after. I added some knobs that I had in my stash, just to add a little bit of gold bling. And there's those beautiful legs on the bottom. Well, what do you think? I have a beautiful credenza now that has a touch of traditional, a little bit of vintage, but with a great modern feel. And it's going to fit perfectly in my space. What more could I ask for? Just so excited about the finished product. It's the perfect size. It's perfect color. And we'll house my grandkids toys perfectly and that was um and it was a great price point i'll get into the numbers here in just a minute but i just want to give a great big shout out to furniture flipping teacher and up paint company for putting this challenge out there and giving us all the opportunities to enter unfortunately i did not win in my category but the other contestants that won really really hit it out of the park and I, I have to give a big shout out to them as well. Um, you can go to Up Paint Company's Facebook page or it's the Instagram page. I'm, I'm not sure it might be both, um, but you'll see the list of winners there and the pieces that they entered. They were really great. <laughs> they were really, really great. And so I am just honored to be part of the mix and honored to have the opportunity to even join the challenge so um that's a big win for me as well as i get a piece of furniture for my own home because i have not painted or refinished a piece of furniture in my own home in years i'm very excited we're redoing our living room a little bit by a little bit and so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can see some of the projects that I'm doing in my living room right now. Well, let me just give you a breakdown of what I have into this piece of furniture between paint and molding and the legs. I have, in the piece of furniture, I have about $134 into this piece of furniture, which if you also add in, um, you know, Bondo and nails and caulk and things like that, say, you know, add in another $20, $150 for this credenza is unfathomable, right? Right, Because the pieces I had been looking at were at least twelve to $1,500. And then they weren't the right size and then they did, weren't, didn't have the legs and they didn't, you know what I mean? They, they did, weren't checking all the boxes that I needed. I am just over the moon excited to have one, have a piece of furniture of my, that I could put into my own home that is gonna, serve the purpose that I need it to serve and it's beautiful to boot and only $150. Sounds like a win, win, win to me. So like I said, hit that subscribe button we and the notification bell so you know when the next video is. You'll see the top portion of this um, china cabinet that I, oh, I have some awesome ideas for that as well as um, a few home projects as well. Bye-bye, y'all. Happy painting.